I guess I should start the video now. How does my hair look? Looks like I'm on the TV. I mean, at least from here. Just look at this, everybody. Is that, that looks like I'm on TV, right? Rest of it, I don't know about that. Yeah, I feel good about the desk. Feel good about the hair. Got to do something about the rest of the self. I'm going to punch myself up, color correct myself, blow the contrast out, make myself look really like sort of K-pop. <sighs> Hello, and welcome back to video games. I'm Tim Rogers. You are watching my pre-review of the Final Fantasy VII Remake on Kotaku. I just said the Final Fantasy VII Remake. The game is called Final Fantasy VII Remake. However, colloquially, we fans of the Final Fantasy series are bound slash doomed to forever call it the Final Fantasy VII Remake. There's no the on there. I'm sure their marketing team is going bonkers all night about this. You may be wondering about the nature of a pre-review. I've prepared the following statement. In a pre-review, I draw upon my two decades of manifoldedly multifaceted experience developing, designing, marketing, advertising, and critiquing video games to detective extract every last truth morsel about an anticipation hot upcoming video game. Anticipation hot is meant to sound like an adjective. Let me give my verdict about the Final Fantasy VII Remake up front. I said the again. Critics are going to enjoy playing the Final Fantasy VII Remake almost as much as they're going to like making fun of the parts that feel sketchy, skeletal, or unfinished. And there will be those parts. I've, I've I've deduced what sort of skeletal, sketchy, unfinished parts are gonna be in the game. I think you're gonna, I think, I think we're gonna have a good time here today. Let's just relax and, and talk about it. Talk about this. Uh, good water, good cold water in this office. I was born to review this game. I wrote that, I don't, I don't, I don't like the sentence, I was born to blank, that's, I was born stupid. I wasn't born to review, that's ridiculous to say I was born to review Final Fantasy VII. I went to college to review Final Fantasy VII. Let's say that. It's a far more important milestone in my life than my birth. I don't remember that hospital. I remember the college dorm I was in when I played Final Fantasy VII. I colleged to review this game 22 years later. I've actually even played this game already. I've, I've, I've played the Final Fantasy VII Remake at E3. So I don't even need to play the rest of it to know that I love it. And for me, Again, I don't do review scores here, though. It's 10 out of 10. I mean, come on, it's, it's a goddamn 10 out of 10. We're, I mean, I can't give it not a 10 out of 10. I'm not a freak, I'm not an idiot. I might die when I play this game. I mean, I've been joking about it, though. I'm dead serious. So I've played every Final Fantasy game. I've played every Final Fantasy 15 DLC. Most importantly, I've played every Kingdom Hearts game. I have not played the Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC yet, no, because I'm busy doing this right now on the day that it comes out. So my experience playing modern Square Enix games, my love of the Final Fantasy series in general, and my creepy nostalgia for Final Fantasy VII in particular conspire to crystallize a trepidation-infused birthday present-shaped sort of mutant hype for the Final Fantasy VII Remake. We're gonna keep saying the. We're just gonna leave the the in there. I'm sorry. I'm gonna. Photoshop a logo that says the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I want to make it look real and we're gonna try to propagate it all about the internet. So the demo I played of the Final Fantasy VII Remake at E3 was just a boss battle. It was just the the, the scorpion robot boss from the, the end of the, the Midgar Reactor segment though. Backstage I was able to see some incidental battles and a, a few story moments and I loved what I saw and I will kill this game when I get it. However, Right now, I calmly know that the game will have some visible scenes. It's gonna be a video game, video game. I mean, you can even see some of these, these scenes in the, in the trailers. The cutscenes are gorgeous, though. As I watched a developer play through a bit of the game, I noticed a couple of nasty little bones jutting out here and there. You can even see them. Like, the subtitle presentation, the subtitles still look, it looks like a video game. Why can't we have text on the screen that looks like 
movie subtitles. Instead, it looks like there's this this character name and then like a, an underline and then like weird little subtitle font. You can tell just from the subtitle font that it's still definitely made by people who made video games. It's aspiring toward Hollywood cinematicism even more than Final Fantasy VII originally was, and that's god darn saying something. And there's just a couple of little not quite there moments. I just feel like it, it looks like, ah. Uh, I'm gonna get into like what exactly I think is wrong. We start with the music. I put on a big old pair of headphones. They had Astro A50 headphones, beautiful headphones at the Square Enix booth at E3. I put on these headphones while fighting the Scorpion boss. When you fight a boss in Final Fantasy VII for the first time, ideally it's late at night in the year 1997 and you are in your parents' house, usually is the best way to do it. And it's on a CRT television and it's late at night, your parents are asleep because they got church tomorrow or whatever, and you've got your stereo plugged into your CRT television and you've got a big old pair of headphones on. That iconic boss battle theme called Those Who Fight Further is uh, one of the best pieces of god darn video game music ever made. And it is so well mixed, it is so well mastered, so well arranged and composed, it's this ridiculous, stupid, deep purple homage nonsense that is just this perfect rock and roll song that is playing while you're fighting these bosses. Uh, and when you're playing it in 1997, the polygon graphics are driving you wild and the music is just, your, your heart hurts. It feels like it's getting hit with a god darn meat tenderizer. It's, 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 it's horrible how painful it is that that music is as good as it is. Now, when I was fighting this, this boss in the Final Fantasy VII Remake demo at E3, the music was, uh, I mean, I don't wanna say it was bad. It wasn't bad. I have a lot of respect for Final Fantasy's current music composition team. Final Fantasy XIII Lightning Returns, one of the best video game soundtracks of, of, of the century. Definitely one of the best video game soundtracks released this century. I had a song from that come up on a playlist, sandwiched in between like a Ryuichi Sakamoto song and a Jim O'Rourke song, a, a piece of music from Final Fantasy 13-3 Lightning Returns. It's not called 13-3, I know that. It came up and my friend who was in my house was like, oh, who's this? So that's, that's how good the music is in that game. Okay, trust me. I love the music. These composers are great these days. They're a bunch of wonderful people and they're out there just doing their art, you know? And uh, I, I, I don't want to be too mean about this music. It, just, it sounded like a SoundCloud remix of the Final Fantasy VII battle theme. It sounded like not just, a, it sounded like what you would see like three songs down in somebody's SoundCloud after you click on their semi-ironic but actually extremely sincere check out my SoundCloud underneath a viral tweet that I always click on the SoundClouds because uh, I'm, I'm the guy who sanctimoniously clicks on every SoundCloud and the check out my SoundCloud because somebody has to do it. Somebody has to read YouTube comments. Somebody has to check out the SoundCloud. Somebody, that's me. It's like, ooh, they remixed a Final Fantasy song. And I'm just like, oh yeah, they used a full range of software features on this remix. Uh, they used them all. And I'm, I'm playing against this boss and I'm like, it would own so hard if they just straight up had the original dumb MIDI music in there. Instead, the music is just going wild. It's just all cylinders. They invented new cylinders so that it could go on more cylinders. I mean, to me, that's, that's a convenient metaphor for what I think some critics might find weird with the, the structure of, of the rest of this video game at large. My impression of what I've seen of the story stuff, the behind closed doors demo is, Wow, they added a lot of stuff to the story. I noticed this even in my limited spectation. In the presence of legendary Final Fantasy director Yoshinori Kitase, in the same room as him, while one of his cronies, I don't know if he was a crony or not, I mean, he was a younger man who uh, had luxurious hair and was playing the game. I noticed, even in my limited spectation, that they, they flesh out all these characters. Wedge, Biggs, Jesse, they all have a lot of dialogue. And I'm looking at that and it's percolating in my brain and I'm like, there's no way that this is not gonna deaden the pace of the, the game a little bit, at least a little bit. Again, I've played Kingdom Hearts, man, and I know that there's a lot of characters just talking jargon at each other 
and calling it lore. I know that I, I'm just so scared they're gonna do that. And here's here's my again, you know, if you love Kingdom Hearts, that's, I love Kingdom Hearts too, because I'm I'm all up. I love Japanese noise rock, okay? So of course I love Kingdom Hearts. I just think like Jesse Biggs and Wedge are not as interesting as Cloud, Barrett, Tifa, and Aerith. Aerith. She's Aerith in the game now. We're gonna call her Aerith because I don't wanna put off any old fashioned people who only played the first Final Fantasy VII. Cloud, Barrett, Tifa, and Aerith is a pretty well-rounded ensemble of clashing personality traits already. They're, they're a nice, full, emotional palette, right? from It's, it's kind of remarkable how well-balanced the personalities of these characters are at the beginning of the game. And this is what scares me, is those side characters, Jesse Biggs and Wedge, they're okay as side characters. They got Johnny, who's like, Tifa's hometown friend? Am I gonna have like a big long side quest with him in, in this new game where he's just a guy who pops in here and there as a, as a, as a guy just uh, malingering around towns as an interloper? How much are they gonna show me these guys, right? So I heard a couple extended dialogues during the, the Midgar bombing mission behind the closed doors and I'm confident that this is going to reflect outward for the rest of the game and that it is going to bloat several cutscenes awkwardly with new dialogue in an attempt to bring these side characters up a category. I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna confess to you that I am a weirdo. I, I played Final Fantasy XV before I played The Witcher 3. That is one of the weirdest decisions I have ever made in my life, and I made it as an adult. So I'm telling you, and I'm being honest that Final Fantasy VII, the original game, which I've played very recently for reasons we don't need to get into, but the original Final Fantasy VII has about as well-paced, lengthy, and generously structured a plot as The Witcher 3. It's just, in this Final Fantasy VII remake, we're, we're only getting part of it? We're getting about a third of it. And yes, it is about a third. I've done the math, okay? Midgar's about a third of the game. So we're, we're only getting a piece of Final Fantasy VII. We're not getting a full. So what I'm thinking is, if the Final Fantasy VII Remake were as smart and luxurious and laboriously, deliberately put together as The Witcher 3, it would relegate all of this side character developing plot to new optional side quests, which feature new characters with names and backstories and a little bit of catharsis in addition to hot loot. And you can give these characters some lines in the main quest, like a couple new lines. The way I would do it is I would give these side characters some new lines in the game. Just give them a couple of new lines in the dialogues to establish them as, as newly more present than they might have been before or to someone who's never played Final Fantasy VII before. They'll just think of them as a character, not as some little tiny guy on the screen whose face you can't really see. And then what you do is you give them numerous joyfully repeatable side quests that let me engage with the side characters in a meaningfully hangouty way. Now, I unfortunately, again, I've played Final Fantasy XV a lot, feel like I might be asking a little bit too much based on the way I feel watching the trailers, based on my experience playing Final Fantasy XII to 100% completion before they invented god darn PlayStation trophies. Playing it on the PlayStation 2, I definitely would have been a platinum trophy holder in Final Fantasy XII. I mean, based on that, I'm guessing Final Fantasy's whole thing is that these side quests are gonna be very fetchy. They're gonna be very looty and fetchy. So I mean, the truth is, I understand that a Witcher 3 style side quest is, is definitely not easy to make. No one has ever made a side quest as good as a Witcher 3 side quest, except literally the people who made the Witcher 3. I cannot overstate this enough. And I, I, don't, I don't know if you picked up on this yet, though. What I'm trying to say is that I want the Final Fantasy VII Remake to be as good as The Witcher 3, or at least as good as Yakuza 0. No, Witcher 3. We're sticking with Witcher 3. And the reason I'm just yelling about The Witcher 3 so much is I earnestly feel that Final Fantasy XV tried to do The Witcher 3's side quests, and it failed in such a unique way that to say that the Final Fantasy XV team fundamentally misunderstood the nature of The Witcher 3 is both an understatement and an overstatement at the same time, and we don't have time to get into whatever that means. So if, if I can be real for a second, 
that I chose to play Final Fantasy XV before The Witcher 3 is my fault. And again, it is one of the weirdest choices I have ever made in my life. So I'm just saying, and I know it's not a contest because we're all gonna have fun. We're just hanging out here. It's not a contest though. For me, as a 40 year old adult who at age 18 poured hundreds of hours into Final Fantasy VII and at age 38 poured thousands of hours into Final Fantasy VII and at age 40 spent a luxurious Christmas pouring about 100 hours into The Witcher 3. Uh, there is no way on God's green earth that Final Fantasy VII Remake is going to be as good as Cyberpunk 2077. And again, I know it's not a contest. I know they're not the same games. At the very least, we can all agree that at least we have three sevens in video game titles in the year 2020. That's something we can all agree upon. So here's what I think the side quests in Final Fantasy VII Remake are gonna be. They're going to feel simultaneously fetchy and luxuriantly adulatory of the game's enthrallingly Byzantine battle system. And this reminds me of Final Fantasy XII's monster hunting side quests. Rather than craft little deep micro plots with, again, named characters and situations and little stories, they didn't have time for that with Final Fantasy XII. The Final Fantasy XII's side contest designers opted to imprison story sketches inside flavor text, then make monsters out of graphics, variables, and numbers, and offer relevant rewards, and let the players enjoy watching their thoughtfully programmed battlers clash against the wicked graphics of a hated enemy who might have just been a monster with a different color palette now. And I think the Final Fantasy VII Remake will likely do something similar. And you know what? I'm fine with that. Because the battle system in that game is great in a pinball-esque, pachinko-tacular sort of way. I love that battle system. It's, it's fantastic. It reminds me of Kingdom Hearts 2. It's the same designer. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep and Final Fantasy XII. And, I, and you can switch between the characters. I love the switching between the characters. It's on the D-pad. You press up and down on the D-pad. So that's how you know it's important. And all of the characters in your party complement each other, like, like in Final Fantasy X, where you have a uh, Waka can throw the ball at flying enemies. Lulu can use magic on magic enemies. And Titus can use his sword on ground enemies. You can now switch to Barret with the, by pressing up on the D-pad and you can shoot at flying enemies as Barrett, and he'll do it himself, though if you want him to target a specific one or change tactics, you want to switch over him to let him use a limit break, you can do that. I think that's pretty good. That reminds me of Final Fantasy X in a really, really good way, and it reminds me of Final Fantasy XII, and the fact that you can cord up hotkeys, you can put a spell on your bumper, and then you press a bumper to, to create a little, you have a little playlist of abilities on your face buttons when you press the bumper. I'm already thinking about what I'm gonna do with my back paddles on my Scuf Vantage 2 controller. There's a whole lot of Kingdom Hearts DNA, Final Fantasy DNA, with this beautiful Final Fantasy VII flavor from a group of designers and developers who have learned so much over the course of literal decades. And I am saying right now that I will gladly shop Walmart style on even the vapidest of side quests if it means wallow bathing in this particular battle system, which I have wine tasted down in Los Angeles back last June. I will grind my boys and girls for hundreds of hours. I will forever game this beast, however stupid it is. If it means I'm hanging out with Cloud and Aerith and having access to a motorcycle, even just sort of whenever I want. If it means I can change the fabric of my pants if I kill the loudest impossible monster. If you give me a casino game I can grind long enough to make my virtual earring a slightly different color, I will dead horse pummel this game like it was Destiny 2 and I was someone who liked Destiny 2. I will kill this game every day until the next part comes out. And I mean, that is just me. Other critics might choose to dissect the game's flaws. I personally know of several lapsed game likers who plan to flock back to the medium of video games in general, not just the Final Fantasy series. They, they're planning to come back to the video game medium because 
of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. The Final Fantasy VII Remake was born with a magnifying glass over its head. I, on the other hand, made the bizarre decision to not leave the video game liker's way of life after Final Fantasy VII. Though I can't stop myself from slipping my mind's feet into the brain shoes of a particular friend of mine who is going to strut out of the hot sun of his great life into the cold, barren saloon of video games for this. He played Final Fantasy VII as a teenager alongside me. For teenage him, that game arrived as a great, transformative piece of fictional media that might have occurred to him as an invitation into a creative life. In his mind, the story of Final Fantasy VII possesses a perfect pace and plot structure. I mean, it does in my mind too, though that's probably only because I indulged myself in the lavish, bizarre gesture of making an, an, an 11-part increasingly elaborate video series picking apart Final Fantasy VII's writing and translation. Anyone who played the original Final Fantasy VII and then moved on to other things is going to come back home and find a baby boy that has gotten so big. They are going to look at the Final Fantasy VII remake and see this child of bloat. Shock immersion into this remake will impress lapsed game likers as the most virtuoso piano solo ever performed unto the blank pages of a coloring book. With one blink, like Trinity learning to fly a helicopter, they are going to go from zero to fully acquainted with the full depth, breadth, and history of modern AAA video games. So I come back to what I believe is the most important element of Final Fantasy VII, the story. Wow, they sure added a lot to this story. If they're talking about this being a full-sized game, they clearly must have added a lot. Now, will these additions disrupt that perfectly balanced structure as it exists in the minds of old school fans, many of whom write reviews at major video game publications. Well, as an expert, all I can say for certain is that it either will or it won't. For Final Fantasy VII Remake's writers to fill their game with only tasteful, meaningful writing that enriches and lifts up the existing original story feels to me like a Powerball lottery ticket jackpot miracle. So here's how I think it's gonna go down for the, I think. I've written a paragraph. I've put myself into the mindset of one of these prodigal returners. And I've written a paragraph of a video game review in their voice. And uh, I'd like to read it with your permission. It's a free paragraph. If you're a video game reviewer and you agree with this, feel free to plagiarize this. It's much better written than, than most of your review is probably going to be. No offense. I've just read thousands of books and I speak literally 12 languages. My brain has gotten good at putting together words. You're going to like this. While it fleshes out some plot details mavens might salivate over. A lot of the Final Fantasy VII Remake is hokier than a hockey stick at a basketball party, and it is going to taint the superficial impressions of the video game medium held by any players attempting to come out of game hibernation to play it to 100% completion. Shake their heads parentally, and then step backward into the oblivion void of hiatus. As I have already said, however, I have played every Kingdom Hearts game, multiple times. I have played Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. I have even played and liked Final Fantasy VII Dirge of Cerberus. That's the really bad, weird third-person shooter starring Vincent Valentine from Final Fantasy VII. So I am going to love every last measly driplet of content that I can suck out of this game with the bendy straw of my mind. Seeing as I have 
already played Final Fantasy VII all the way through literally 18 times. I found it necessary to put myself into the mindset of myself after I eventually finished playing the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I figured it might literally kill me. So I figured at the very least I had nothing to lose by writing the concluding paragraph of my review of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. A little bit of a real pre-review right here. The Final Fantasy VII Remake does so well at fleshing out previously wafery characters, and it builds drama and tension with such joyful delight that washed in this, perhaps the most professionally loving retro game tribute ever concocted, we old-timey lovers of the game begin to expunge memories of the original from our brains. By the time the Final Fantasy VII Remake ends, we have forgotten what comes next. Then, as the credits roll, the memories come crashing back. This game, whose box proclaims the title Final Fantasy VII Remake, only represents a small fraction of this game's story. At the pace this Midgar chapter establishes, the remainder of this adventure should approximately comprise 1.9 Witcher 3s. I'm going to say it loud and clear, and definitively, and for you, The Witcher 3 is the only video game as good as The Witcher 3 that has ever existed. The angry tides of the ocean of history have created exactly one Witcher 3. How can we trust a mere one video game development studio to create ostensibly two more Witcher 3s in any time period shorter than 28 years? Thus, my final criticism of the Final Fantasy VII Remake, it is not enough. It could not possibly ever have been enough. And given the grandiosity of the gesture it represents, given its presence as this huge, out of nowhere behemoth of video game player loving piece of work, it's neither impossible nor not abjectly horrifying to imagine only a similar impossibility could possibly conjure its descendant. What I'm saying is, the Final Fantasy VII Remake is so huge and so good and so much of what we have always wanted that it feels impossible that it exists at all. And that makes it feel 10 million times as impossible that the rest of this game is ever going to exist. On the one hand, I loved the Final Fantasy VII Remake. On the other hand, which is a gun, the Final Fantasy VII Remake terrifies me. It's gonna get a nine out of 10 from IGN because they'll be too scared of fan backlash to give it an eight. And that's it, that's all I got. I was born stupid, however, I will not die hungry. Video games forever. Final Fantasy VII. Forever. I'm gonna grind that game into a pulp. That's all I got. I'm trying to think, when was the last super great thing Square Enix made? I mean, I love the Dragon Quest games, and I think they're super great, but Dragon Quest games have been essentially the same since the 80s, so they're not, it's not like new, they're not new. They haven't made anything spectacularly great that's new in definitely 20 years. No, I don't know, 15 years? I don't know. Yeah, they're, it's like they, I mean, Final, Fan Final Fantasy VII, 22 years ago. I mean, I love all the Final Fantasy games, but was Final Fantasy VII the last really important one? I think so. I think all of the ones since then have been, they've all suffered comparisons to Final Fantasy VII. Are we, are we recording? Yeah. Oh, hey, that's, that's good. I can include that, because that was like a genuine, I guess I should start the video now. How does my hair look?